white nationalists in MAGA, they want to speak for you, you specifically as white men. But in these times, silently disagreeing is not enough. The presidential campaign for Vice President Harris is hosting what I would call a cringe fest. And the latest event, White Dudes for Harris. Let's break it all down. Welcome back to the Devorah Darkens show. My name is Devorah Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Vice President Harris. I mean, their campaign is based on race. They have been hosting these segregated calls. Yes, a black woman call, a white woman call, now a white men, white men call, right? Zoom calls is what I'm talking about. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at this whole cringe fest that's happening with these white dudes for Harris, and we're going to call some of this BS out. Let's take a look at this first clip. Uh, and that happens at the same time as the myths around America that we grew up with, uh, that we as men are expected to be protectors and providers are going out into economy that doesn't really allow for that, especially for working class folks. And sort of like compounding on that, uh, you know, masculinity as a trope has been co-opted by the MAGA right into something that feeds into and exacerbates the loneliness epidemic, as well as the mental health crisis that many face that end up leading to really destructive behaviors. We aren't the only ones that are hurt by these things. Black and brown people, LGBTQIA plus people, especially trans women and indigenous people. So you guys seen that, right? Uh, let's cover two main points that he was trying to make. I want to go ahead and debunk those. The first one is the economy for the working class, right? So obviously, if you're a person who uh, it has a nine to five and you are a man, it's really hard for you to protect and provide for your family in this economy. Now, is that if we leave it right there, is that true? Yeah, you could say that it's harder today to buy a house, to make enough money to pay for a family than it was maybe 20, 30 years ago. I'm not disputing that. What I am disputing is he's blaming it on uh, MAGA and President Trump, which I find these people to be so cringe and ignorant at the same time. And by the way, as we go through these clips, these are successful people. These are successful people, but I, it, it's like a disease for some reason. The more successful they are, the more ignorant they seem to be about political issues and what's absolutely happening in reality. Like they're so out of touch. Anyway, I digress. The reason why we find ourselves in this position is the government spending, of course, that has uh, sparked inflation and wages have not increased and things are much more expensive. And I keep telling people this, and this is actually the smartest but frightening scenario that actually needs to take place in this country. So listen to this. We need to go through a recession to reset value in the marketplace. There's a lot of things right now that are overvalued, and it's because we haven't had a recession to reset all of this inflation. And obviously, no one wishes a recession on people, but that's exactly why we find ourselves in this, in this position. The government has been delaying, delaying, delaying. That's why you keep seeing interest rates stay where they are. They do not want the economy to crash. And it's really for political reasons. Just imagine if the Biden presidency had a recession on his watch. I mean, that would be all bad plus the border. The second thing that he was talking about was masculinity and how it leads to depression. I'll tell you what leads to depression, and it ain't masculinity. It's this woke mind virus, people cutting off their penises, people making fake vaginas, people who don't even know what their genders are, people who are not, they're not even focused on the education in school, they're focused on what their identity is. Then you go to the university level, and they're teaching people that if you're white, you, you should feel guilty, and if you're black, you must be less than other people because you're oppressed. That's causing depression. The social media and the toxicity on social media where everybody is so negative about everything, that's causing depression. So what, what they're doing is just bullshit. Just call it out the way that it is. Masculinity is not causing depression with men. It's these woke ideologies that are. But let's continue. There's another type of successful businessman or woman, business person. And that's the con man. And I know there are also con women too, but if we're really honest, in this white dudes group, 
most of the biggest, baddest cons in the world are guys. So let's just say con man for short, right? A con man is different than an honest businessman. Might or might not have an honest to goodness product or service to offer the world, but it doesn't really matter, right? He's charismatic. He's good at lying. He's good at getting people on his side, his customers, his employees, his vendors, his investors. And he doesn't really give a shit about them. And as soon as he needs to, he's ready to screw them over as long as he ends up with the money. That's a con man. It's not exactly the kind of man you want to be, but it is one way to be successful in business. So ask yourself, let's just say Donald Trump is a successful businessman, which I don't think he is. Is it because he's been an honest businessman? Or is it because he's a con man? I think that's really, really obvious. This guy is a con man. Of course he is. He's consistently screwed over. Look at his past business careers. Consistently screwed over his customers, his tenants, his employees. Look at his past presidency, where his signature program was cutting taxes for rich people. Con man. Okay, so this guy is obviously uh, triggered emotionally. Uh, he's definitely bought into the Trump derangement syndrome. And I told you, these people are successful. You watch some of their movies or their TV shows. Uh, but when it comes to stuff that is happening to everyday Americans, they are so out of touch. Now, this whole idea that uh, Trump is a con man. Let me tell you about someone who truly is a con man. His name is Scott Tucker. You should Google him. Okay, Scott Tucker uh, was in charge of a $3.5 billion scam around payday loans for everyday Americans. So people would get payday loans from his companies and he would purposely jack up the interest rates to make more money. Anyways, uh, he was sentenced to 16 years in prison for that. Now, let's go back to President Trump. Uh, he's never served prison time. He's never been found guilty uh, for defrauding people like that. Um, now, they tried to get him in New York and say that he defrauded the banks, but even the banks came out and said he did not defraud us. We actually made money from him. So if you really removed your emotions and you just looked at the facts and you did a little critical thinking, you know, you could be really neutral with this and be like, you know what? He's probably not a businessman I would trust, but to say someone is a con man, someone like him who was the president of the United States, yeah, I think I think that would be watering it down, of course, and it would be uh, overshadowing uh, who truly is a con man, like a guy named Scott Tucker. Definitely Google him, please, because I really want you guys to see what, what a con man is. Now, the uh, second thing, back in 2018, uh, Trump passed this law called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, so uh, TCJA, and I will go Google this for yourself, so I'm just going to give you guys the bottom line to it, and you guys can, you know, uh, dive deeper into it, but the bottom line is this. Everyone under that tax plan was given a tax cut, everyone from people who barely made any money all the way up to the corporate businesses, and that's what they don't like. They don't like that even though everyday Americans got tax, tax cuts, so did the corporate businesses. And so the progressives don't like corporate for whatever reason, even though corporate donate money to their campaign, which I find funny. But I, I, I digress. Um, everyone got tax cuts under that plan, and it expires in 2025. So let me give you three uh, main nuggets to this tax plan just to debunk what this guy was saying. So number one, what it did was actually raise the standard deduction so you could actually deduct more money from your taxes. Number two, the child tax credit was in there. OK, so for all those parents out there, when you were getting those checks, it is because of his tax plan. And number three, which is huge in California, by the way, when they pass Obamacare, you have to understand we were being penalized when we would not use it. So if you don't get health care, 
you would have to pay on your taxes for that. Well, he removed that requirement. Now, obviously, depending on your state, they may have added that requirement back, which is what happened in California. But I digress. You see, if you do just a little bit of research, you'll find that what they've been saying about his tax cuts are just utterly false. Let's continue. The idea that that men can gather to talk about how we feel. Interesting, powerful concept. And to include all, we said in our invitation, everyone is welcome. That's a really interesting phrase. Everyone is welcome. You might hear it in other places. I'm pretty sure you can feel that it's true here with this particular political party and this particular candidate. Okay, so if if all people were welcome, then why would you name the call White Dudes for Harris? You, you see how there's so much contradiction in their messaging and what they're actually doing. If you were to take a look at the policies, the decisions that they're making versus the rhetoric, it doesn't line up whatsoever. So this call is for anybody, right? Then why, why why not just say all dudes for Harris, right? Why not just say that? Or why not just say Americans for Harris? But they had to make it about race. And then you have someone like that saying things like that. It, it just is so ridiculous. I, I really do believe that. It's sick. And this leads me to wrapping up this video because this is what I really want to say to you guys. The Harris campaign, if they just keep doing what they're doing, is not going to be hard to find contradiction after contradiction and to find that the policies that they are going to run on, which are not many, are going to do more damage to our country than what the Republicans want to do when President Trump gets into office. But what the, what the media is going to do and what the Democrats are going to do, they're going to try to use fear to prevent you from doing your research. And that is what is going on. They are using fear. They're using race. They're using gender to prevent people from seeing what the truth really is. That's what they're hiding behind. Is it wrong for a woman to run for president? No, there's nothing wrong with that. And to prove it to you, if Nikki Haley was running for president and it was Kamala Harris running for president, I would still vote for Nikki Haley. I, I would never vote for someone so liberal and progressive as Kamala Harris. It just doesn't make any sense. That would be the downfall to our country. It really would. So this brings me to my final point. Pay attention to what these people are doing. They're putting race, gender, feelings over the needs of everyday Americans. Right. This whole campaign from Vice President Harris, it's about her. It's not about everyday Americans. So I call bull on this whole white dudes for Harris. I think it's borderline racist. If you if you ask my opinion, um, I think it's just very blatantly ignorant. And um, I hope that whoever's in her camp will get them to rethink their strategy, because I don't think this is going to work long term, maybe short term, while everybody is so excited because Biden dropped out of the race. I got that right. And she's younger and it's a different person. So it's fresh. That stuff is going to wear off and policies are going to become front and center. So hopefully they get their act together and start talking about that. And the other side of me is I hope they don't just be who you are which is woke and devilish and just evil to our country so that we can get President Trump back in that White House and have policies that have common sense built in. Uh, well, that's my mindset about this. What about yours? What do you guys think about this whole white dudes for Harris, black women for Harris, white women for Harris, right? They're, they're just really just creating these calls with race and gender involved. I want to hear what you guys have to say about all this and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay strong, and stay true. Peace. Oh.